Let's jump into the destroying of the spirit of death. This is quite sober. We obviously last week, was it only last week, yeah. had an amazing conference with a Ken Fish. Um, so I know a number of you were gutted that you couldn't make it everywhere I go. And when in Canada, people were saying, I wanted to come to Scotland, but I couldn't get there. But don't worry, we will do more. Um, mm -hmm. But the need for us to unpack one of his sessions it is the tattoo session because you'll want an update, but it really is looking at the spirit of death. So hold on to your hats. Can we just start by 1 Corinthians 15, 26, where the word of God talks about death being the last enemy. Mm. If you were there at the conference, wave and just type the highlights so we can see, okay? And um, death being the last enemy, in other words, Friends, death is always very persistent. Mm -hmm. It is unlikely that you will go through uh, a year of your life, or even dare I say it, two or three months of your life without somewhere the smell or the persistence of death being round about you to some degree. Mm -hmm. And the need, therefore, for you and I to not get really worried about that or bothered about that in any way, but to identify and know the wiles of the enemy, to be able to turn and say, I have a persistent enemy. I will always have a persistent enemy because death is the last enemy. So it will be around. And I am going to have to learn to turn and say life in Jesus name as my own lifestyle come alive in jesus name be established in life let rivers of life pour out of me no enemy i speak life into my relationships my finances my call my direction of travel my church my geography and that sense of that the words of life are continually coming forth from you because we live in this world as spiritual warfare champions. And it's not that I want us to get into a funny, like weird tick or like a like a, a, a wrong uh, methodology or a sense, of, oh, I didn't deal with death, but more of a robust understanding that I have a persistent enemy and I have to speak life in a very proactive way to deal with that, Sam. Yeah, I think if you look at God, he and everything about him is about fullness. Fullness of life, fullness of redemption, fullness of breakthrough, fullness of his power. And God is a God of fullness. He's not a good of a God of small measures or of half measures or of here you get a little bit of that. But Satan and all that he is opposes fullness. That is his main aim, to oppose fullness. And I think ultimately, why is death this thing that we circle around all the time? Why is death, I think, the most uh, persistent demon? I think you see it in scripture, but it is the essence of who Satan is. John yeah. 10, 10, Luke 22, 31, he comes only to steal, kill and destroy. They are yeah. death actions. Yes. And by definition, <laughs> Satan is a death spirit. Satan is a spirit that is about annihilation, that is about ending in the wrong way, that is yeah. about death, that is about the draining of life. Now, can I say this? Death rarely looks when it, because some of you might think, I don't have a demon of death. You know, I don't have a terminal diagnosis. I haven't had a disaster that could have killed me in the moment. I think there are, uh, there, there is the attacks of death where it is immediate. But I yes. do think more subtly that we don't realize it is the slow draining of fullness and the slow Very limiting good. of life that actually Satan puts in the lives of his people where we are not discern discerning enough to realize actually he has a foothold and it looks like just oh, or just a little bit of less life oh you know i grow less energetic with age yes. or oh, my passion you know it just yes. it, 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 it lessens as i get older or you know i'm just happy with status quo right now i'm happy with nothing challenging and i do think the spirit of death we have to say sometimes comes in the immediate tragedy of you know the the, the tragic death of an immediate death of a business or the tragic immediate death in health or the tragic immediate death of a relationship absolutely but for most 
most people, death comes and it's the slow draining of life and it's the slow attack and fullness. And we want to come today with that liberation word of God is a God of fullness and you can have a fullness of life too here and taking you out of where the enemy has gained ground in that particular area. Yes. And I would really like to hear from you in the comments today. Can we just pause who feels that there is some sort of opposition that may well be a spirit of death remind i want to remind you that death can work you into place for years yeah and how many of you feel a drip 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 bit by bit of being worked into place by death where you think well i'm doing okay or I'm getting through, but can we have a moment of truth telling between us where we say, I think I might have been worked into a place by death for years where maybe I have to have a moment of honesty right now that I am not living with any thought of abundant life or great expectation or a sense of very um, decent functioning wellness that actually something in me has been opposed and it has worked on me and worked me into a place I should not be in. Absolutely. Just wave at us in the comments because it's not something we just have a chat about and that you guys are clearly not involved and we want you to be, some of you are going, yes, three years, somebody saying eight years. Uh, we have we have numerical counters going on in the comments here and um, and somebody saying that dripping of that desperate working you into a place um has come to a head i i'm reading i'm seeing uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, that, years. yeah yeah yes yeah five years yes for years okay we're going to talk about this and then we are going to get you free you need to stay on this call you need to make sure that you like and you share this you need to be able to uh, partner with us and and share the truth and the, the liberation that we're about to bring. Ruth. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're bang on and we really need to be spiritually minded as we think about this. Sometimes we think of death as just literally the end of life. And obviously that's, you know, the, the physical definition, but the spirit of death, like like they're saying, it, it is our longest standing enemy. And I think Ken Fish said it's, it's, ironically the longest lived opponent for being called yes. death is quite funny um but i think if we want to be people of the kingdom that are advancing and seeing jesus overcome we have to take so seriously he said i come that you would have life and life in abundance the enemy yeah. came to steal kill and destroy but i came that you would have life and life in abundance and so the spirit of death manifests not just as ending physical life, but yes. any way that it is stealing, killing and destroying the abundant life that you have. And I'm seeing even a lot of comments there that are saying things like, oh, I'm fatigued for years. Could it be that? It could be that. Yes. What you yes. need to do is you need to seek the Lord, inquire of the Lord. You see that over and over in scripture when something is out of sorts and something is not quite right. You inquire of the Lord and you say, Lord, is there a death spirit behind this? Or is there something else? Is there a curse? And like God is faithful to reveal that. I'll tell you that the first time that I um, became aware of death as a spirit, um, this was, I don't know, I was probably like a student, early 20s. Um, and I'd been playing, right? It seems like a funny story now. But do you remember that app called Plants vs. Zombies? Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. That everyone was obsessed with. I was playing that, right? Like It's like these zombies and these, these plants that are like fighting each other. And I became really unwell. And, and at the time I was like, oh, I've just got the flu, you know, but it was one of those flus that was really, really bad. And I was, you know, when you're just so miserable and I yeah. was like, Todd, Todd, like, will you pray for me? Cause this, this is just like, this is really awful. Can we just kick this out? And at the time I went into that prayer thinking we're praying for physical healing. Cause I just want to get past my flu. But actually yeah. as Todd started praying for me, I heard so clearly that the Holy Spirit said to me, you've got a death spirit and the spirit of yeah. death got access to you through your plants versus zombies game. And for me at the time, like that, that was, that was mind blowing because I hadn't encountered that before. Um, But what we ended up doing was we changed our prayer from Holy Spirit heal to in the name of Jesus, I bind you death. And I say, get out. And I think I must've coughed out and I got instantly physically healed of that flu, like in the moment. And for me, that was like my step into realizing, oh wait, death is a spirit. 
and death can gain access to our life and yes death manifests yes. in sickness but maybe also other things like fatigue or like yeah. poor circulation or then it can even attach itself to um, our circumstances to, to business to our finances yeah. to our relationships yes. um, and so I think there's such a need to be spiritually minded but to start from that place of inquiring of the Lord Lord what is going on here and then taking it from there Yes, and actually, somebody very um, helpfully has has uh, put long COVID question mark. I think I um, certainly had COVID once, perhaps twice, and my daughter seemed to have it a lot of times. But um, I remember very clearly sitting on a beach um, on one of the Hebridean Islands, being so exhausted because I had COVID, and the children were running around playing. David was walking the dog. And I remember lying on the beach, do you know the way you lie on a Scottish beach? Mm -hmm. With your coat and your hat and your scarf and your gloves. You don't lie on a Scottish beach in your swimsuit, my friends, okay? So so this is not sunbathing, but that's a by the by. <laughs> if, if, if anybody is sunbathed on a Scottish beach, I would be um, impressed. Uh -huh. Anyway, have you sunbathed on a Scottish yes. beach? What? Yes, with tanning oil. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I remember thinking oh no something's crawling up my legs in the spirit and i could feel the death spirit in covid try to own my physical frame and my emotional status and um, yes death is a spirit and i really believe that if you have had covid or long covid it's a deliverance from the spirit of death that is going to get you free it is it's just not an illness it is an assignment of death. So uh, yeah, yeah. And we pers I'm like, what? I remember thinking, what is this? And I suppose because we can see in the spirit and feel in the spirit, I could literally see it crawling up my body because it had a place to land because of the virus in my system. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There we go. Okay. So uh, let's um, uh, talk about some mm -hmm. things that we would look for um, if death was around us, give us some measurements because we want to be over the right demon. OK, mm -hmm. so what I want to do is give us some measurements. All right. Some of you will need a pen and paper. And uh, this is prophetic insight into scripture. Mm -hmm. This is the prophets who see and understand the links that open the doors. So uh, track with us. And we are in Mark chapter five. And Mark chapter five is the story of a uh, legion, the gentleman who is oppressed by a legion um, of demons that Jesus needs to deal with. Now, we're in Mark five, we understand that he's living amongst the tombs. Yeah. And so there is an obsession with death. So let's just have that as number one, an obsession with death. Now, does anybody know somebody obsessed with death? That would be obsessed with wearing death uh, colors, um, skulls, goth, goth culture, obsessed with conversations around abortion, euthanasia. There is a focus that they either are dressing in or there is a sense that their makeup is just slightly off where you think you look lovely but there's something too dark now i'm not we're not talking about oh heavy eyeliner like from the 80s is a bad idea okay we're, um but we're okay but we're seeing something that we think i think you might be anchored to death in some way or obsessed with death because this gentleman is living amongst the tombs so this is your entry level do I own? Do I wear? Do I talk? Am I interested in death? That would also be an interest in genres of um, film. Uh, a, a, a very dear friend of mine um, who's not Christian is obsessed with the horror. I can't even, I don't know about you guys, I can't even watch a horror film. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. Why? I, can't even, Why? I, mean, I can barely even watch a 15 and I never would watch an 18. I think the only Why? 18 Why? I ever watch is The Passion of the Christ. I don't even watch a 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just the images are, yeah. So you, you get that, um, those kind of obsessions with death. Uh, Sam, do you want to talk about that? 
I do think, yeah, anything that is uh, overly obsessed with death or uh, in games uh, and gaming, fighting death, those sorts of things, um, or yeah. are, are even just disproportional thoughts about death or obsessions about funerals yes. um, and death services or ceremonies or dead bodies, uh, even there. Um, and it, it becomes a... a, a an obsession where where yeah. you see it and you can see it marking people actually sometimes you can't you need your spiritual eyes so it's not always a physical thing but yeah. more often than not over time i would say death and the spirit of death does leak out into the physical place in some way whether that be an appearance or an action or an obsession with something um, yeah. and you, you see that a lot or a disproportionate fear of death. Janet, that's a very helpful comment. Keep commenting on us uh, uh, as we go. Yeah. Janet, you had a season, and this is on Facebook. Hi, my friend. You had a season thinking every night I might not wake up in the morning. And um, yes, that kind of thing is yeah. that spirit of lingering death, or you have a fear that your children are going to die or you're going to die prematurely. And that is, although it comes out as a fear, it is a hook or an anchor or an an accidental obsession with death that has got in. And we see that in uh, Mark chapter five. Yeah. Um, anxiety as well, Rebecca Rednick. Hi, my friend again over in um, Romania. Yes, that that the, the, the kind of anxiety fear of uh, of catastrophizing every situation. If you know somebody who is always on worst outcome and we always have people like that worst outcome people and um, that is um uh, an obsession or an anchoring in or hooking into death mm -hmm. ruth yeah i think that that death imagery it goes both ways because when you see death imagery or people obsessed with death imagery either that can be an indication that they are operating under a spirit of death or also yes. it should be a warning that they are about to get demonized by death if they are not already yes. and i see in culture you know so many things have been normalized like that face paint that looks like a skull um, yes. or like in america dressing up your homes with skeletons in october like it's like we went to america in october a couple of years ago and my kids like such wee sweet innocent hearts they were horrified they were just like like they couldn't even look we we're driving down streets and they're like why are people putting skeletons yeah. and dead bodies like yes. outside their houses yeah. why why yeah. do americans do that and they were like yeah. i never want to come back here in october because why would you put put death all over your home and all over your street you know they were yeah. so shocked and impacted and i think that our culture has told us oh yeah you can celebrate these things and like it, it, our culture's normalized it but like i tell you like it's either a mark that you're already demonized by death because you're drawn yeah. to it and you find it exciting or if you're not already like me getting on my little zombie game like that could open a door and i had to repent because i didn't know that that little zombie game was yeah. going to be dangerous to me but when the lord yes. revealed that to me i had to repent and say sorry lord i i unknowingly partnered with a spirit of death yes. for playing that game and yes. so i had to delete it off my phone i had to turn and you know i, I closed that door but I, I think these things we almost need to like do a holy spirit scan and say lord have i unknowingly even opened a door to death through these yeah. things yeah i think that's really important let's keep let's keep another two or three minutes maybe longer on diagno we are diagnosing okay mm -hmm. diagnosing my family mm -hmm. so and we're, we're pushing through mark five so this guy uh, the demonized gentleman with the legion it says that he is crying day and night now isn't that interesting if there is a sense of an overwhelmed sadness or spontaneous wailing or disproportionate over emotionalism that you know you carry this usually applies mainly to women and there is a sense that you that your emotions are spilling out you've got to think that may not just be hormones or femininity because we are made a little bit more emotional and we celebrate that but if your emotions are on steroids and you can't rein that in, you've got to say, am I anchored into death somewhere? Because this man in Mark 5 is wailing all day and all night, mm -hmm. okay? Does that apply to anybody here? You know your emotions are not yeah. balanced, whole, and in check. Or the inability to um, to steward your emotions or to settle yourself um, yes. and you feel that like your emotions uh, almost run away 
all the time. And there's a sense of, as Emma said, catastrophizing or getting lost. Yes. That often is a spirit of death as well. If you feel like once your emotions come out, there's no stopping it and they kind of are almost out of control and you can't regulate them, that can be a Yes, yes. Okay, still in diagnosis mode, all right? So this guy by verse 5, we're not very far into the chapter of Mark 5, he is cutting himself. So you you are you are looking at the sense now the whole open door of self harm and self mutilation. Now we need to sit in that a bit. Um, I think these are markers or diagnosis. They are markers for entrenched, indwelling death spirits. Mm -hmm. So many of you are now going to be going a little bit like wobbly on me. Stay with me because you're realizing that you have markers for an entrenched death spirit. I will get it out of you in a moment, all right? We are not, we'll talk about self-harm and cutting, which is where tattoos come in, but you're talking about sleeplessness because the, this guy in Mark 5 doesn't sleep. So not only we're talking about unregulated emotions, we are talking about persistent sleeplessness as well or uh thoughts of suicide even if you have never acted on it yeah. but you're aware that you thought oh it might be okay even if you go on where did that come from and you've reined yourself in okay mm -hmm. or obviously suicide attempts but so you're looking at that sliding scale of suicide from oh i had a weird thought and i overran it with good thoughts to actually I am thinking about suicide quite persistently so sleeplessness um cutting and suicide are all markers of entrenched death spirits Rasam. whether whether in you or in your family line um as well yes. I would say it, you know you may not have this but you may think oh that was my dad or that was my mom or that's my son or that's my daughter or that's uh, they, then that can still be around and you you can still have that sense of it of it being in your family line we see yep. that a lot as well um yes. and if there's patterns of suicide or suicide attempts or a, a, a kind of emotional numbness or mental health breakdown then we want to break those patterns as well of the spirit of death that are generational whether because you might feel like well you know i can't see that in me but i can see that in my family line well there's, yes. there's still freedom yeah. for that for you today yeah and can i add with suicide as well like again our culture normalizes suicidal thoughts and makes it sound like it's quite natural but i don't know what you and emma and sam what you guys would say but i would say suicidal thoughts are always demonic like yes. that was not a natural thought that is not just you that yes. is a voice in the back of your head tempting you with an idea normalizing an idea making you think about it even if you've never seriously thought about carrying it out carrying it out even if you've never actually made a plan yeah. of what would be my means and why would i do it like the fact that you visualize what it would be like to kill yourself or, or think through details like what would be my funeral like and like who would yeah. come and what would happen to my kids if you find yourself in those thought patterns i would say there is a demonic voice there that's influencing yeah. that and it starts with simple things but it, it can increase and so i say don't shrink back and now oh, this is natural this happens i'd say let's get you delivered let's get this shut out because you don't have to live like that yeah yes true let me keep pushing our markers you guys are going to need to share this comment on it and like it because i'm giving you a, a really robust list here that you're going to need to take note of this is so important so that we actually are equipped to deal with it let me keep pushing it now these things can come in uh, as vows made by your ancestors your family line um, or they can be your own partnerships so you know that somebody's saying a cult yeah there can be stuff in your family line that's been agreed to by your forebearers that has opened the door to death spirits like uh, a cult like freemasonry which will open up your entire generational family line to death spirits interestingly this same gentleman don't worry i will pray a prayer of deliverance stay with me margaret in YouTube, I will pray a prayer of deliverance. In Luke 8, this gentleman is naked. I think there is a sign of death that we can take from this scripture. These are Mark 5 and Luke 8, that an obsession with nakedness is a sense of 
perhaps an anchoring of death. Is that not interesting? Now, I don't mean between husbands and wives and all of that good stuff when you're married, but that that but an obsession with being naked or bearing too much flesh. Woo! What can we say about our teenagers and those in their twenties? Because this gentleman is naked, and it's a sign that death. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pornography is absolutely a death spirit behind it because it will kill any sense of normal standard relationships. Yes, okay, we're interpreting the scriptures. Shall I keep going? Keep going. Yeah. Yes. Naturist movements are not life-giving movements, my friends. And it's nakedness wanting to be free is really not the way. Okay. If you have had near death experiences not maybe your own fault like car crashes or you have been around the dead or you have seen a disproportionately high number of dead bodies um in your life and there are uh, accidents maybe all around about you and you're not and you think maybe i'm just clumsy but some very serious accidents or near misses that you are not deliberately seeking all of that is spirit of death stuff. Yes, Don, three times you've almost died. Your comments are very helpful here. Yes. And um, that would have been, those are death uh, spirits, Don, and we will need to break that off you. Um, false teaching brings a death spirit. Now, let me talk to you very straight. Wave at me in the comments don't name the church. I don't want church names here. I don't want church denominations named and shamed. Okay. I'm going to say something controversial. If you know that your denomination, I will name one church of England is in false teaching. Um, whether that's about blocking the Holy spirit, whether that's about sexuality whether that's about women and marriage, but anywhere you have deliberate, willful, false teaching, you will have a death spirit over that church denomination or congregation. And it will be harder for you. And you're like, you know, but I'm supporting them and I'm an individual and I'm autonomous and I'm independent. No, when you're in church family, you're in covenant, my friends. Um, and therefore, you are under the death covenant because that whole denomination will have attracted a death spirit. Somebody's saying 80% of American churches <laughs> <laughs> on our YouTube page. I don't know how accurate you are, my friend, but <laughs> quite possibly. <laughs> okay, As I'm going to come on to tattoos. Do you guys want to comment on that? Because what I just said was very controversial. You go, Sam. <laughs> no, I think uh, false teaching is a massive one, especially when you prescribe to it um, and uh, inadvertently. I, I do think, just as an aside and not so much making comment on the markers, uh, this conversation, the whole time you're speaking there, Emma, I'm just going to myself, we are just still not spiritually minded enough, are we? We're just, yeah. and, and actually, these are things that when you, when you switch your life on to be more spirit aware than necessarily world aware, when your discerning of spirits are yeah. there, actually you spot it a mile off, it doesn't become such a shock. And so even in this, I, I don't want you to uh, feel shame in the comments. If you think, why have I never noticed this? Look, I think yeah. there's thousands of people that have never noticed this. We're all in that place together where we're now going, yeah. we were not spiritually minded enough. Yeah. We opened some doors. Mm -hmm. We thought some things were okay, but actually they're not. But yeah. now let's get free and now let's become more aware for the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And, and again, I'm seeing a lot of these comments saying things like, oh, but here was my heart motive. And like, this was, I, I meant well when I did this, or here's the great things about my church. And, and you know, those are all yeah. fair things to think. But like Sam's saying, we need to understand almost like the laws and the rules of how things work in the spirit. Like, um, demons are thieves they will steal kill and destroy they will look for any loose locks that they can just get in they're not like oh sorry i see your heart was good i'll just back off you know they're like if i can get in i will yeah, get in and, and i think of it kind of as like 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 the rules of crossing the road you know if yeah. i step out on the road not at a crossing 
if a car comes out and doesn't see me and hits me, it's like, in all fairness, no matter what my heart motivation was, I was on the road and the car was in its lane and I got in its way. So even if I'm like, oh, but I had a reason I needed to cross the road then and my heart was good and my heart was pure. It's like, no, I still stepped onto the, the road. And it's like that with demons. We might be like, no, but here are the great things about my church and here's the, my good motives and why I did this. And that might all be all be true. But again, if we're stepping into enemy, enemy territory, if there's a partnership with death, yeah. of course the demons are going to come in. Yeah. Somebody's actually just asking the question, what if you've got a call to that church to, you know, to be a bridge and a transitioning lead to help them out of where they are? I mean, that is brilliant. You're still under the death curse of that, of that because you're in covenant with them. And that means you're going to have extra need to diligently pray. I speak life over those that belong to me and those that I have responsibility for and over my own life. Okay. Just because just because, you know, Daniel was called to Babylon, you know, didn't mean that he didn't have to warfare extra and, uh, and you know, jump through hoops of purity and extra prayer and fasting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there? Okay. yeah, yeah. Similar to like living in Glasgow, you could say, oh, why would you live in Glasgow? There's such a death spirit over that land. It's like, no, I just need to be spiritually eyes open. I need to cover yes. myself. I need to pray and fast. I need to seek God for how he wants me to operate in this zone. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, Sam, let's talk about tattoos. Because now it's controversial. If it wasn't controversial before, we're about to get controversial. Tattoos sit under a marker. It doesn't matter whether it's Hebrew tattoo. It doesn't matter whether it's a biblical verse you have tattooed. It doesn't matter whether you feel God told you to tattoo yourself. That is, those are all problems. It is the sense of cutting, no bubblegum tattoos. Uh, it is the sense of cutting or piercing of the skin is the issue, all right? It is the, the place of repetitive breaches of the skin is really what we're concerned about here. Now, I do think there is a sense that um, that there clearly my ears are pierced. There we go, lovely earrings on today. There is a sense that um, I'm not anchoring into death with an obsessional situation going on here. But I do think that if you have multiple piercings, especially on sexual organs, and you are obsessed with either cutting by self-harm or cutting by piercings, or you're obsessed by cutting with multiple tattoos, you have to ask some more intelligent questions. Mm -hmm. did, your, yep. did, your, did your piercing give way to a wave of other piercings or were you just satisfied with, oh, I got my earlobe pierced and that I'm happy there? Was it a door that before you knew it, every month or in one setting, you wanted five or 10, which is what we see a lot of the time. Same with tattoos and other forms yes. of body uh, modification. Actually, you know, 99% of the time when someone gets a piercing or someone gets a tattoo or someone modifies their body, it opens a gateway to an obsession. And that, I mean, we, we should, alarm bells should be going off in our yeah. head with that. Yes. It opens the door and there's an obsession and there's this need for more where there's no sense of satisfaction Sad, being satisfied and of being able to settle look our alarm bells need to go off and we need to consider there's probably a spirit of death yes yeah yes. and the number of people i hear saying oh i actually quite like the pain of tattoos i like sitting through that pain yeah. there's something satisfying about that yeah. feeling and even the feeling of it healing afterwards like i yeah I, again i would say okay step back and ask the lord what is going on there what in me desires and enjoys and is satisfied by yeah. hurting yourself you know harming yourself yeah. and, and again like looking at this guy in scripture like just one of them one of the observations of what he was doing he was cutting himself like he probably kind of was satisfied by that pain as well yes yeah i mean i would want to put it is huge sharon wingfield in facebook i would want to push this more um that i do think repetitive tattoos repetitive piercings 
um, particularly in um, extreme places in your body, show that you are in emotional pain. Just someone, say that, someone that. Said that. Someone said it in the comments, actually, very briefly. Yeah. I used to quote. Yes. By yes. Getting tattoos. Yes. So you 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 have to go deep in this and ask yourselves: Am I doing what I'm doing to my physical frame? Um, am I doing what I'm doing to my physical frame, where I'm in piercing the skin to cover emotional pain? Am I using physical pain to suppress mental pain? that is never enough. So I'm multiply in self-harm or tattoos or piercings. And we have, I have heard, uh, and Ken Fish quoted it as well, people saying when I'm having a piercing or I'm self-harming or I'm tattooing, all the crazy in my head stops. Now demons love blood. Demons love blood. They will take it in any form they can get it, which is why and um, Acts 15, now we're in the New Testament, Acts 15 in the New Testament, re-quotes and restates Leviticus 17 to 19 and pulls for the Gentiles some things from the Old Testament into the New Testament and says, you must still deal with these things, that not all Levitical law is history but in acts 15 you have some things that are maintained as no-go areas and some of those in the list in Acts 15 well one of them is obviously sexual immorality which is restated from levitical law into the new testament you know that but actually um the uh, issue of blood is restated so you're not just the, the drinking of blood but you're thinking about uh, eating blood, uh, drawing blood, obsession with blood, and, uh, and, and it making yourself bleed. So you've got, sorry, my dog is so distracting. My dog had surgery. Can you hear her crying? She's right yeah, outside yeah. my door. I don't know whether David can move her. She had surgery yesterday for tumors and uh, my dog is not very well. And she's literally outside my, can you hear her? No, I can't really hear her. Can't no. hear her. She's like crying no. the whole time. Can we get her locked? She's a dear lover, lock her in another no. room. Anyway, I don't want you to go into extreme panic about this. I want you to take your life, your piercings, Botox, fillers, tattoos, your blood sausage um, that you might be eat that's culturally normal, okay? All of that kind of stuff. And I want you to pick the whole lot up and say this why am I doing this? Is this just, I want to look a bit more beautiful and I'm quite relaxed about that. Or am I disguising emotional pain and therefore I am anchoring myself accidentally into death? So we weigh all of these things up, okay? Um, cuts on the body, uh, uh, implants, studs, body art, branding. Uh, and I would say this, is an increase in massive tattoos the sign of a nation in distress? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Somebody's saying you've had to get Botox for extreme migraines on the NHS. Is this okay? Yes, because you're not anchoring yourself into death. That's uh, uh, what um, the, the dental hospital here in Glasgow, because you know I've had jaw surgery recently. The dental surgery in Glasgow, though you can't really see the scars too much, um, but uh, they did a good job actually. Uh, but the dental surgery, uh, uh, the dental hospital prior to my jaw surgery had tried very, very deep Botox to see if they could um, stop the pain. But that's, that is not me anchoring myself into death, okay? So it's just having um, a spiritual intelligence in this to say, what is my motivation? What is my orientation here? And in breaching the skin, am I anchored to death? Yeah? Okay. Yes. Now, I'm being very personal here because I, I think it's beholden. Whenever um, Rebecca Redneck is, is asking... Whenever I am um, died now, what I age am I now? Um, 47, 48 this year, but I died on an operating table. David, how old was I? 21. It was before when we were married. Most of my blood is a blood transfusion. 
David saying 21, uh, it, um, I lost most of my blood. And I, and I would say that, um, uh, uh, I, I, and they gave me the wrong blood trans, tr blood in a uh, blood transfusion. So I have a whole lot of um, funny antibodies in my blood and a lot of scar tissue from an awful lot of surgery that I have had. And there's no doubt about it that the enemy tried to take my life. No doubt about it. So I have pierces of the skin. I have chosen ones and I have non-chosen ones and I have a lot of blood loss and uh, a blood transfusion it means that i have to be on high alert to cleanse the blood from my blood transfusions mm -hmm. i have to be on high alert to say okay spirit of death you could connect with me i'm not going to get massively over dramatic about it but i'm going to ask for my own blood to be put through a holy spirit sieve so that anything of death is out of my system okay yeah. All of that kind of, it's just wisdom because I know of the persistence of the enemy of death. And when I went in for my jaw surgery, um, the uh, team here had me on a prayer rota um, to make sure that the spirits of death were not um, uh, close to me because I, I had pain in my body that needed dealt with. So we, we approach these things spiritually minded, all right? Yeah. Now somebody's saying, am I continuously praying that? No, 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 no. I did for a while, um, but I don't continuously pray that. Sometimes I do a double check. Have I taken anything on? Now, you if you have tattoos and piercings, you must not panic here okay you can i want you to say i'm saved and i'm anointed i'm saved and i'm anointed i'm saved and i'm anointed you are not under condemnation but i am about to get you free all right yeah Ruth. yeah yeah i mean i would add to that a lot of questions there and like be discerning about even the difference between conviction and condemnation if you yes. have got you know you maybe you've cut yourself maybe you've got tattoos maybe yeah. you are one of these people that just out of your pain got all these piercings and um, like don't feel condemned by this don't feel like yeah. you're under the law think of it more as like who is God? What does he like? What does he want for us? And what might be yeah. weak points that the enemy got a foothold in our life? And do I need to do a bit of business in the spirit to, in humility, make myself right for the Lord? Say, Lord, I'm sorry in my pain, I went to the wrong source. Will you forgive me? And then, you know, clear out what's gone on spiritually. Don't sit under condemnation because you think, oh, I broke a rule and I got it wrong. You know, don't fall yeah. into a legalistic way of thinking. Just thinking of, think of this more as like, um, how can I make sure I'm as free as I could be and how can I walk in the fullness of what God has for me and how can I learn more about how God designed our bodies to be and how he designed us to process our emotions and how I can walk in freedom with him yeah yes and actually I specifically said to Ken Fish um uh uh because he's really the expert here what about hair transplants for male pattern balding and what about um plastic surgery and he and I came back to uh, looking at the scriptures and talking about motivations and talking about um, what were you trying to cover? What were you trying to hide? And that sense again of emotional pain that you are medicating that and the obsessions in it that um, then invoke anchors into death. OK, so we're we're asking you to be um intelligent or yeah. there so can we just say that what are you saying plucking your hair i don't look that's not cutting can we just that's not bloodletting all don't, right that's not piercing your hair off most of us women who hit perimenopause and menopause if we didn't pluck our hair we would be at the we would be growing beards okay so <laughs> let's be honest about hormones <laughs> all right can we just say this though? Do not let yourself go into frantic obsession and anxiety. What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? You can yeah. hear that in some of the comments here. Okay, take a deep breath. You're just saying, God, is there anywhere I have accidentally opened a space? a door to the spirit of death that is keeping me out of the fullness of life. There's yeah. a baseline question for you to ask. Yeah. You know, Holy Spirit, 
expose. Not exposing for the sake, as um, Ruth said, for condemnation, but to convict you so that you can get free. Mm -hmm. Do not yeah. panic here. And you're going to have to pull yourself back into the fact that you are not under the law in the same way. You are not under condemnation. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. And this concept, this conversation on the spirit of death is ultimately about putting the enemy into a place where he is exposed he's not yeah. hidden now yeah. he's exposed and whenever anything's brought into the light freedom is easy whenever there is an exposure of the enemy there is a sense that there is then authority to shift him yeah. out and so this conversation is about saying yeah. enemy you are exposed now you're going to be evicted now you're yeah. going to be fired and you're going to be yeah. pushed yeah. out so don't yeah. panic and let your mind run away here yeah, go yeah. Back and say even if i have let death in because of the name of jesus because of the blood of jesus because of the resurrection of jesus there is freedom that i can have right now yeah yeah and please don't use this video as an excuse to go to all your friends with piercings and tattoos and say here did you know that you're now demonized because of this okay. like let's be spirit-led and kind in this process you might want to say to your friends and family yeah. hey do you want to think about this let's pray together let's ask the lord to reveal what's going on here um but let's not go and be jerks about this topic okay yeah yes yeah, there, there, there's a very wise word let's not be jerks about this topic Absolutely. okay and um, final thought before i pray for you um uh in my notes here around death is um if you can't hear god about your future yeah. and if you can't see your future with ease i would query an anchoring into death or the sliming of a death spirit mm -hmm. because you should be able to be a, a, to know the uh the future that god has for you and hear god about your future so that's another kind of slightly uh add-on to it yeah. um somebody did said about um uh somebody pulling out hair clearly if you're plucking your own hair out as an emotional response to your pain that is a death spirit yeah. you know when, yeah. when it's that kind of perverse level and very destru destructive level of hair removal um, and um it, it, the kind of dry needling and chiropractor i don't have any problems with and um, i think particularly when we're looking at the medical thing of actually i need to get my body um well and healthy you're 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 going after death spirits or you should be if you have any um infirmity in your body or pain in your body at all my friends surely going after a death spirit first would be our first thing. Absolutely. I mean, surely it should be, mm -hmm. you know, um, anyway, so that is uh, uh, that. Now, shall we, have we answered all the questions that we can? <laughs> <Thanks so. laughs> I love your questions, guys. There's an awful lot of the R is nearly over, yes. <laughs> um, use discernment. And uh, somebody's saying, how about celebrating Halloween with nice costumes? No, we never sell a Halloween in any way, beginning, middle and end. You can't redeem Halloween. Halloween no. is a celebration of Satan and death. death. We don't <laughs> touch it. Why okay? would you want to? Why would you want to? It's literally, is it, keep me right, guys. It's, isn't it literally in the witchcraft calendar, the occult calendar, the day of the death? It's the day that the world of the dead is the closest to the land of the living. And that's why they jump on it. Why yes. would you celebrate that day? Why would you celebrate that day? It's not so I, yeah, I would be fairly ferocious about that um, because I want, do you know what? I want my family to be fully alive. Yeah. I want my children, my children are all saved. I want to see my grandchildren all saved. I want cascading life down everything that belongs to me. I want the people in my church and in GPA network worldwide to be fully alive. You know, I want everything to know the abundance and the goodness of, of Father God. So I don't I don't want anything that is accidentally going to be a death anchor in any way, uh, subtly or very evidently. And Halloween is very evident, but there are a whole load of more subtle things here. And um, so let's just deal with it. And um, Sam, do you want to lead people in repentance? Now, if you're on public transport, you still need to say this out loud, okay? So we're going for out loud repentance. Mm -hmm. So hit us with it, Sam. Yeah, we'll lead our public transport contingent in. 
<laughs> prayers. Yeah, so I'm just going to, uh, simple repentance prayers so you know. We will just repent for any way we have opened the door or welcomed the spirit of death in. Any markers, whether that's cuts, whether that's tattoos, piercings, body modifications, clothing, just so you know what you're going to repent off i don't want yeah. to take you by surprise and it's a simple prayer so uh, ruth i wonder if you would just repeat after yeah. me as uh, just to to yeah. lead uh, I'll be the person our, our the boxes, yeah. online. so father god father god i thank you that you are a god of the fullness of life i thank you that you are a god of the fullness of life but i recognize today but i recognize today that there are places where death that there are places where death still has access to my life and my family. Still has access to my life and my family. And I come before you today. And I come before you today. To repent to you, God. To repent to you, God. For every door I have opened to death. For every door I have opened to death. Whether that's a marker. Whether that's a marker. A tattoo or piercing. A tattoo or piercing. How I dress how I dress, the things I obsess over, the things I obsess over, what I watch, what I watch, any body modification, any body modification, or every heart motive that's hidden, or every heart motive that's hidden. I'm sorry, God, for opening the door to death. I'm sorry, God, for opening the door to death. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask for your forgiveness. And today I break agreement with death. And today I break agreement with death. And I speak to you, spirit of death. And I speak to you, spirit of death. And I say you get off my life in Jesus' name. And I say you get off my life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, let me just... Uh, so, every spirit of death that is sitting upon your life, indwelling in your uh, in your physical frame, mm. oppressing your emotional status, mm. every blood transfusion mm. that never got cleansed, yeah. every surgery that you had where you never got disconnected from the spirit of death, mm. every accident or near miss that you had where yeah. death came in and was not immediately revoked, mm -hmm. every place your family line was cursed by Freemasonry mm -hmm. or which craft or any other coven where mm -hmm. death came to you we now speak over all of yes in the name of jesus yes. and we speak to you spirit of death that is working and is anchoring the saints mm -hmm. of the most high god into less than who they should be mm -hmm. i revoke you and i eject you in jesus name you yes. come off these dear ones you come off their brains you come off their thinking you come off their physical bodies you come mm -hmm. off their health you come off their relationships you come off their finances you yeah. come off their ability to to hear the future mm -hmm. and in the mighty name of jesus i lose the burning fire of god upon your lives right now mm -hmm. that everything of death be radically and divinely and wholly incinerated in the midst of you so yes. that everything of death leaves mm -hmm. everything of death comes off you no matter mm -hmm. where you are in the world or mm -hmm. when you are watching it mm -hmm. this and in jesus name in jesus name i <laughs> liberate you we hmm. come as the liberating force. If you've had COVID as well, yes, well remembered. Thank you, Margie. We now pull even yeah. the death spirits to those who had COVID or long COVID off you right now. And I, some of you will need to yawn. Some of you will need to cough. Some of you will just need to let out a roar that releases that spirit from your life. Work with me. Mm -hmm. This is not something passive. This is something deeply engaging. Yeah. And some of you need to start to type in the comments if you're getting stuck and I'm going to keep praying. Uh, but if you feel it coming off, uh, let me know in the comments too. This is weird to do mass deliverance online, but work with me okay yeah. so i want you to be aware of your breathing don't mm -hmm. hyperventilate no need for that but i want you to take a big deep breath and we go all of it out on the breath in jesus mighty name you literally will need to do that so every indwelling spirit of death out on the breath in jesus name okay i'm not dealing with it in your churches because your churches have an agreement and if i kick it out of your churches i will make it seven times worse leave the churches alone who are under death spirits i'm dealing with you as individuals where you are crying or yawning or gagging that is okay we leave no remnant of death 
everywhere there is a seed of death it's hidden by curses for your future that you can't see your future you can't access your future because seeds of death are forward cast in your life we pull those up out right now in jesus name yes we unseat and weed yes. the garden not just of your right now but we weed the garden of your future in jesus mm. name we yes. take out like, your fear of death come on Again, I want you to open your hands. You're going to have to get yourself into a letting go posture. Work yes. with me. So we, we take an open and a letting go posture. Some of you will literally need to go like that. We let go of our fear of death. We yes. let go of fear of our families dying. We mm -hmm. let go of obsessions with taking our own life. And mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, that suicide spirit that's woven in with death, you are coming up and you are coming out on the breath in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. You yes. may not stay in their minds. No. Come on. Uh, Ruth, keep commanding because keep typing whether you're stuck. If you need us to keep praying, keep typing. Otherwise, we'll come to the end and we'll think it's a done deal. I don't want to leave you where you're like, it's not going, it's not going. Come on, keep going. <laughs> yeah, and we're pain has taken root in your body and you have unusual pain or persistent pain and where the spirit of death has a hold in you in that way i bind that pain i bind that death i say you come up and out right now breathe it out and i say you will be well you will be well i bind every way that death is stealing from your thought life i bind every way that, that death is giving you uh hopelessness and a negative thinking and i say you will see the future and you will smile you will be well again and your dreams oh. will be restored to you you will be able to press on to what is ahead leaving behind what is behind you and so in the name of jesus death get your hands off these dear ones get your hands off their finances get your hands off their marriages get your hands off their Mom. situations and i loose to you all freedom i lose to you hope again i say you will have hope in the future i say you will feel light i say you will be well again and lord i pray that you would do immeasurably more in these guys than they may even expect right now in jesus name mm. sam can you use it? we need to just command it out and off and out and off and out and off come on stop hiding inside them stop hiding inside them and moving around their bodies up and out right now i'm glad mm. you're burping burping is great yeah. some of you are coughing and coughing well done it all comes out don't you dare stay inside them you spirit of death don't you dare go back down i destroy the throne within your lies where death yes. is sinking we destroy the seat of death in the midst of you it comes off you right now in jesus name come on sam command it off Yes. And so we just release the fire of God that incinerates every death yes. spirit right now, that exposes every hidden spirit. The fire of God right now comes in and burns its way through your yes. entire being. Yes. That every remnant of death, that every fear of death, that every spirit of death right now comes up and comes out. And some of you, look, we can do this online, but some of you are just going to have to say it out loud, death you get out in Jesus name. Yes. Death, you come out of my life. And actually yes. sometimes you need to force a cough or force a yawn or, or yes. blow by yes. force. In other words, I am pushing you out. Do that now. So in Jesus name, we say to you, O spirit of death, this is your final eviction notice. You get up and you leave right now in the yes. name of Jesus. Yeah. Pack your bags and take all your minions with you. Every mm -hmm. lesser demon that you have brought in goes as well. And in Jesus' name, we speak freedom, freedom, yeah. freedom. And where it sits on your shoulders, where there's an oppression, it comes off you. It doesn't just come out you, but it comes off yeah. you and out of your atmosphere in Jesus' name. And we speak liberation from the grips and the claws and the curses of death in yeah. the name of Jesus. Yeah, and I find doubt in Jesus' name. For those of you who are doubting and thinking, I don't know if this is going to get done. I don't know if this is done. I think it's just stuck in me. Um, I encourage you by faith you will be well so Come I on. find doubt in the name of Jesus I say doubt you get out so that death can get out and I say today you will be completely free you will be completely free from death this doesn't need to come back this doesn't need to hang around this doesn't need to linger but mm. death you come out completely now Jesus yes. name.
Now, what a number of you are typing is that you can feel it around your neck. That is normal. That is a very good sign because when the demon is leaving your body, this is its last place before you blow her tight. So demon of death, where you have got them by the neck yeah. and you have moved within them, but you have not exited them. Some of you are shaking. I get that. You now come off on the breath. Mm -hmm. And you come up, I'm going to grab literally like I, I would, like I would do if you were standing physically in front of me. Uh, I will deal with your protection in a minute. I pull it out. I pull it out. I pull mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. I pull it out. Come on. And yeah. Work with me. You're start, like you're standing right in front of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I pull it out. I pull it out. I pull it out. You get out right where it is. I grab hold of it. Work with me. Okay. Yeah. Off the neck and off the throat mm -hmm. and right from the deep places. Some of you will need to put your hands so I'm not tall. Way down here, okay? Put your hand where you can feel it. Mm. Put your hand where you can feel it on your body. Mm. And I would suggest, sorry, I go out of focus now back here. Walk it up your body with your hand. Walk it up your body and pull it tight. And you do a physical act with me, okay, to pull it tight. Yeah. So it's amazing that it works across the airways. All yeah. of it comes off in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Deep places. So, yeah, Marcia, you have it stuck in your throat. That's fine. Force it because you yeah. can You can take authority. It's weird. But you need, they need to go uh, like that. Uh, not so you strain your vocal cords, but you're just expelling where it's got something because it's spirit, so it's breath. So you mm -hmm. can do that. Okay. So all, 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 all off in Jesus' name. Yeah. Well done. How are we doing? That feels a little bit better. Yeah. Some of you still coughing. Some uh, small. He yeah. Some of you um will start to feel a wee bit spacey, spacey. if that makes sense. A bit lightheaded, which you're reporting, Maria, on YouTube, just because the spirit is going and mm -hmm. because it's been indwelling or oppressing for so long, you can you can feel a little bit like spacey. Don't worry. I'm about to deal with that. I'm not going to leave you. It's an extended par R. OK, yet yeah, snot. Sometimes it comes out. You need to blow. Yet yeah, lightheaded is fine. Lightheaded mm -hmm. is fine. Lightheaded is a good sign. Let me deal with that. Any more exit prayers? Co yeah, Jill. Yeah. Final bit out of Jill Dixon right now. Yes. Jill, a big deep breath for me. <sighs> Let that last bit go. Anybody else stuck? Man, mm -hmm. I don't know how many of how thousands of you are on. Anybody else stuck? Charity, that final bit out. Yeah. Yeah, Maria, yeah. you've got some strange noises. We release the fullness of that to be uh, uh, out of you in Jesus' name. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All of it, Charlotte. Oh, yeah. I yeah. get to where you are in the spirit realm, Charlotte, and it comes off your throat. Mm -hmm. Leave her yes. alone in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Okay, same with uh, Cecilia, maybe. So I don't know that I'm pronouncing it. All of it off, all of it off. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Ruth, do you want to fill them with the spirit? You need to now go into receptive mode, yes. and then we'll stop it coming back. Yeah, we'll yeah. Spirit in, lots of coughing, it's good. We're not going to put the spirit in and then I'm going to release a block. Yeah, yes. your, man, your womb is going to come alive in Jesus' name. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna fill that space that has now been evicted, and then Emma's gonna change the locks so stuff can't come back in. And so in the name of Jesus, I fill you afresh with the spirit of God. I say, yeah. spirit, fill these ones and fill them with peace. Fill yeah. them with love. We declare that your perfect love casts out all fear. And so we say, perfect love, come down. Be filled. Be filled afresh. Be filled with joy. Be filled with wellness. And we speak over your bodies that you will not get unwell, that this will not return. But in the name of Jesus, be filled, be filled, be filled. And I speak over your mind as well that you will you will have hope again. We lose hope to you and say, may you have more hope than you have ever had before in Jesus' name. Sam. Yeah, and we just speak right now that the fullness of life cascades into every part and portion of yeah. who you are. And yeah. where there was a limitation or that life was put in a prison inside you where you could have a little bit of it, but not lots. I speak that you are now filled with the fullness of life that ejects even any remainders of death. But in the name of Jesus, we speak life 
to yeah. that which once was dead, whether mm-hmm. that's your mental health, whether that's your body, whether that's your family, whether that's relationships, whether that's finances, wherever death sat and brought a limitation, we speak right now, yes. if fullness of life lands and occupies who you are in the name mm-hmm. of Jesus. Yes, Lord. So into that sense of spaciness or dizziness, Mm -hmm. we put the spirit of the living God Mm. to fill the void. Mm -hmm. So where you feel a bit like, ooh, what's going on? Any dizziness, any lightheadedness, any place you have now been left that is vacant, the spirit of God goes in right Mm -hmm. now and indwells and occupies the place. And Mm -hmm. any remnant of death is pushed out by the indwelling spirit yeah of God. yeah okay. breathe it in so rather than working with me and going okay you're now working with me and you're breathing in i receive okay some of you just need to say i receive the spirit of life come on work with me you can yeah. type that into the comments i receive the spirit of life and you must be proactive proactive okay so i'm mm-hmm. typing it i'm grabbing hold of it i'm breathing it in okay yeah this is not passive church yeah, and say it out loud as well. Say it out loud. What are you receiving back from God? Speak those things out verbally. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're in public. Yes. I don't care if you're in a room and other people are there too. Like speak out. I, I receive life. I receive life in abundance. I receive wellness. I receive yep. hope. Yep. I yep. receive self-worth. Whatever the thing is for you, speak it out, declare it out, let it be heard. Yes, good. Now, where you are in the world, Work with me again. I wish I could see your faces. Maybe we'll come to one day, okay? In the name of Jesus, yeah. we put an exclusion zone around you. We agree, particularly those who I, who I have spiritual responsibility for. It, this is uh, especially weighty if you are a member of the GPA network. If you're not, yeah. you need to join. But for those who I have very definite covenantal spiritual responsibility for, I say uh, as, as a place of authority in your life that there is now an exclusion zone. Mm. Yes. The spirit of death. And we say, death, you may not shadow them. You may not come back into their lives. Mm-hmm. You may not go after them again in Jesus' name. Yeah. I push it back. Yes. I break where it's come down your family line mm-hmm. right yeah. now in yeah. Jesus' name. It is severed in mm-hmm. its permission. The curses are broken. The family line vows are made mm-hmm. null and void. Yeah. And I call you into abundant life. Yes. yes. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Sam, do you want to give some top tips and Ruth? Yeah, I think look, when you are delivered from something, especially for many of you that has been long standing you will feel quite spacey for a few days. And so take it easy. Uh, Be kind. Worship music. That sense of delighting in good things that God has put in your life. Um, Drink lots of water because you'll feel dehydrated from all your coughing and yawning. Barack in it as well. But here's my number one top tip. And this is, we've encountered this a lot. When you have been delivered by something, from something, What Satan likes to do is to put the thing you've been delivered of in the atmosphere around you so you think you're not free. So if you have been delivered of feelings of anxiety today, you may at some point feel, oh my goodness, I'm feeling anxious. I've not, I'm not delivered. Do not let yourself get to a place of shame where you re-welcome the demon back in. It's not in you. The enemy puts it in the atmosphere and you just have to say where that demon is in the atmosphere, get out in Jesus' name. That is his number one tactic. And the amount of times we do deliverance on someone and then they say a week later, well, it came back and then, you know, and then I'm not free. No, it didn't come back in you or on 
on you. It came to the atmosphere to try and make you confused or to try and get you to doubt. So be aware of that. And if you feel even over the next week that you got free of something today, but you had thoughts or inklings of it that came out of nowhere, that is an atmosphere issue where you use your authority in warfare. That's not a deliverance issue where you start to question your level of freedom. You say, where that is in the atmosphere, taking anxiety, for instance, or suicidal thoughts, I I cast you out in Jesus' name. You don't have any authority to be in my atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want some scripture for that, look up Matthew 12, 43. When an unclean spirit comes out of a man, it roams through the waterless place looking for rest, but doesn't find any. Then it says, I'll go back to my house that I came from. And that's exactly what he's talking about. And so I tell you guys, we have just done what I would describe as spiritual surgery. We've, regi- we've removed that demon from you spiritually. It is removed. It is gone. You can expect that an enemy tactic is to bring it around, trying to, trying to like, you know, tempt you to let it back in. So you know now, fill the space and just don't open the door. Emma has reversed the locks. It can't get back in. And I want to encourage you as well that you may feel, you know, like that temptation to let it back in, but if you resist it, it will give up and it won't harass you for the rest of your life. So this doesn't need to be a lifelong thing. If you can resist it a few times, it will stop coming back. It will just leave you alone. And I would say as well that um, while we do, you know, we've just done some spiritual freedom, you now also need to learn to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, because you have learned to live with this for a long time. You have thought patterns, you have habits, you have, you know, your normal experience of life is, is you know, working with this thing. And, and I think of it kind of like um, when I was um when I was a teenager, I think there we we identified that my hips were out of alignment with my spine, and so I kind of learned to walk like this. And there was a lot of pain because of it. And basically, I got you know the I don't know as a chiropractor who does that. Whoever it was clicked my hips back into alignment. Um, but I was used to walking like this, even though my yeah. spine wasn't twisted anymore. And so I had to relearn to walk mm-hmm. and, and then the pain healed, the muscles regrew mm-hmm. and all this. And so what some of you have just walked through is we have evicted a demon. We have got that out, but you're yeah. used to limping. You're used to walking yeah. with it. You're used to walk, surviving around it. And so you're going to need to be transformed by, you know, really processing what you've just been through with the Lord, asking him for the truth, mm-hmm. asking him what it looks like to walk with a renewed mind and, you know, fill up this space again with worship and with the truth and with life and you will find that you'll just you'll you'll regrow the muscles you'll need you'll walk in with the the, the straightness that you need to walk and the lord will lead you in that but don't worry if it's not like an instant like right now the demon's gone everything's fine you feel normal it's like okay now we've got the demon out let's recover from this process and let's walk into more life that's what it's like very good that's very very helpful well i think that's nearly our longest ever par hour (laughs) so a par, hour and a half. Uh, great. Um, don't go after your regions, cities, nations, and churches. That's That's, I would need to give you so much teaching before you do that. Just get yourself and your families free, Absolutely. okay? Yeah. And, that's how, families that's free. How, yeah. and that's how nations get free, set free anyway, by you getting yourself. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. Don't, don't do the national stuff. Sit in no. this. Mm-hmm. Sit in this. I really need you to share. I really need you to like this. I really need you to tag people in it who need to see this who need to follow us and um, it's very rare to do mass deliverance online and <laughs> uh uh but clearly effective that's just the mercy of god all yeah. right that you can do mass deliver if you know somebody who's demonized or attacked by this i need you to work with me and help us caring is sharing sharing is caring and we really need what we're doing not just to be held in the hands of you know um the few but we really need you to apply this to your friends and say come on and um, you might not be able to get to glasgow but they can do the same work of deliverance uh, live online brilliant mm-hmm. right uh we will see you again next week i'm away to the bible college of wales tomorrow morning literally home for 24 hours if you're in swansea in wales i will see you over the weekend and uh, then we are back for par hour next week lots of love bye, bye.